Hello, my name is Todd Miranda, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to work with the basics of ink in WPF. So let's begin by creating a new project. We'll create a Windows application project, and we'll name that So let's set up our user interface first. And for this demonstration, we need some area that we're going to be able to use ink on. So we're going to have to have some kind of canvas that we can draw on. And then we need some buttons to do some actions on that. So let's start off with our default grid. And let's go ahead and create some column definitions and some row definitions. So we want three column definitions. And we just want them to equally fill the space. So we're just going to not have to specify any other information about our column definitions. And our row definitions are similar, except we want the height of the main row definition to pretty much fill the remaining space that this row definition is not filling. And this guy down here will be 50 pixels. OK. So that gives us our columns and our rows. So the first control that we need to add to our WPF application is our ink canvas. And this is a control that's provided in WPF to handle ink input. And this is a really easy control to use. So let's give it a name and we'll call it ink draw. And then we'll specify that we want a height of auto. We want uh, vertical alignment to be stretch. We want width to be auto and we want the horizontal alignment to be stretch. And then we want to specify that this guy lives in grid dot column span three and the first row, which is zero since grid since columns and rows are zero based in the grid. Okay, great. There's our ink canvas. Now let's add a couple of buttons to do some actions on our ink canvas. So the first button will have some content that says new. We'll specify a horizontal alignment of center, a vertical alignment of center, just to center it in that space. We're going to say that it is in grid one, again, zero based, and it is in column zero. So our first column. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add our click event handler. We know we're going to need one, so we'll just go ahead and, ha and add it. New click. And we'll copy this button. And we'll just paste it a couple more times. And we're going to create a save button and a load button. And we know that this is going to be in column one and column two, respectively. And our click events will have some different names. Great. So for the most part, that's our UI. We've got an ink canvas to be able to do some ink stuff with. We've got a couple of buttons to act upon that ink canvas. So now let's go to our code behind and make sure that we implement these click event handlers so that we don't get any errors when we try to build. So we'll do void new underscore click, and it will take an object sender and a routed event args e. And we'll copy this a couple more times and change the names of them, just like we did before. OK. So there's our event handlers. Well, to start off with, really all we want to be able to do is clear the ink path. You know, when, you're, when you've got an Etch-a-Sketch and you're working on your Etch-a-Sketch, when you want to erase it, you turn it upside down and shake it. Well, it's a little bit easier to do with ink canvas. All we have to do is specify the ink canvas dot strokes, which is the collection of strokes that are on that ink canvas. And we call their clear method. All right, let's stop here. Let's build. And we don't have any errors. And let's run this. And let's see what we've got so far. 
Pretty simple to do what we've done so far using this ink canvas that's up here, which is our drawing surface. So by holding down the left mouse button, we can draw on this surface. We can write letters, albeit poorly. And then we want to clear that. We just click our new button. It clears the strokes, and we're free to start over again. All right. Well, in and of itself, that's pretty cool. But really, it's not very helpful if we can't do anything with it. When we close the application, we lose all of our strokes, we lose all of our data. So let's look at how we can persist that data out to a file. First thing we need to do is clear up some of these references that we don't need. And add one more. So now that we've got our I.O reference added. Let's start with our save. We need to create a file stream and we're going to call this output file and we'll just do new file stream. We'll specify a path. We're just going to use relative path so directly in the application root we'll create something called ink strokes dot ink and we'll specify that it's file mode create all right, so there's our file stream. Now, the stroke collection of an ink canvas makes this really, really easy to save those strokes out to a file. As long as we have a, a stream, in this case we're going to use our file stream, we can output the strokes to that stream. Pretty easy to do. We specify ink draw dot strokes dot save. And then we just simply pass it our file stream. And then for good measure, we'll close this after we're done. So that's how we save our strokes out to a file. Couldn't get a whole lot simpler than that. Three lines of code. Let's look at how we load our strokes from the file. Again, fairly simple to do this. So we'll create a file stream, input file, and we'll say equals new file stream. We're going to specify our same file that we had up above. Now to be really correct, this should really probably be stored in some kind of a variable that you could reference. That way you could change it in one place and it would affect everything else. But for this demo, we're going to kind of cheat a little bit. And we're going to specify a file in the mode of open on that file stream. We're going to specify our canvas strokes equals new stroke collection and we're going to pass to the to the default constructor of the stroke collection our input file. How about that? So we just simply pass in our file stream and then for good measure input file that close and that is pretty much it. So let's build, make sure we don't have any errors no errors and let's run this. Okay so let's create some beautiful drawings up here in our canvas and we can clear that obviously and we'll work on our beautiful drawing again and this time we're going to click save. It saved the stroke collection out to a file so we've got a file now out in our root of our application and if you don't believe me we'll clear that and then we'll load it from the file and there's our our image there and if you really don't believe me we'll start our application again and we'll come in and load that file and there's our drawing now we can add to it and save again and load it or we can do new make a simpler drawing and save it and since we did file mode dot create we're just overwriting that file each time and there we go so you can see that because of the tools that we're that we've been given, the ink canvas and the ink canvas stro the ink canvases stroke collection, very very easily we can write an application that's ink enabled that saves that whatever signature or whatever type of drawing or whatever they did in in the strokes actually saves those strokes out to a file and then can load those back up from the file.